How you guys doing? Good. You're like, tired? tired? Yeah. Man, tired. You know what time I've been up? Two o'clock in the morning. Every day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Every day. Yes, that's my name. I'm going to tell you that in a minute. Every day I get up at 2 a.m. to go to work. I'll explain why in a minute because that's my job. That's what I signed up for. My name, in case you're wondering, is Keith Mills. I'm a sportscaster at WBAL TV 11, Channel 11, WBAL AM 1090 Radio, and 98 Rock. How many of you guys ever heard of 98 Rock? Ah, oh, no. <laughs> so, so my job, my job every morning is to get up at 2 a.m., get to the station by about 10 of 3, and get ready to go on the radio and television at 5 a.m. in the morning. Sometimes I work with these two ladies here. I always work with her, Mindy Becerra, who is one of our news anchors on TV. And sometimes I work with Lisa Robinson. But I want to ask you guys a question. I want to ask you a question. How many of you guys want to play sports in college? How many of you guys like to sing in a choir? Maybe sing in your church choir. That's sweet. Good job. Well done. How many of you guys play an instrument in a band? Sweet. Excellent. How many of you guys like to read? Yeah, there we go. Hey, let me, let, me, let me give you a piece of advice. Whenever your teacher's here and someone asks you if you like to read, man, put your hand up. Even if you don't like it or not. Because they're like, hey, that like, kid likes to read. How many of you guys like to write, like write stories or something? Well done. How many of you guys like to do nothing? <laughs> You're all being honest. At, in any one of those questions I asked you, every one of you guys had your hand up for one of those things. And I'll explain why that's really important in a minute. But I, my job, guys, I have been very fortunate. I have been all over the world covering sports. Football, been the Super Bowl, been to the World Series. I cover every Ravens game. I know Ray Lewis personally. I know Ray Rice personally. I have been to the Women's and Men's World Cup Soccer Championship, Men's and Women's College Basketball Championship. I'm only saying that not to sound egotistical, just to give you a little bit of reference as to what I do. Okay, so I have been all over the world doing sports, covering sports. I'm going to show you a little bit of what I do, okay, right now. I'm only going to show you about 50 seconds of it so you guys can get a chance to see what I do on television. And I want you to take a look, I want you to think about two things. One is what's called my persona. Does everybody know what that means? Your persona? Your persona right now, what's your name? Victoria. Victoria's persona is, man, this guy is wasting my time. <laughs> she just let out a big sigh, like, why do I have to sit here and do this? Well, you know what? I, I appreciate you doing that. You know what, guys? My job right now is to hold your interest for the next 45 minutes so you could possibly figure out maybe something that interests you when you get out of school, okay? That's my job. My job on TV is if this is a remote control and you guys are sitting home, you don't zap me off when you see me. Fair enough? How many, how many of you guys sit here like this all day long when you're home? I do. And if there's something I don't like, I get, I, I'm changing it. So my job is to hold your attention. So Victoria, my job today is to make you, when you walk out of here, think, man, that was the coolest thing I've ever been to. And you might, and then again, you might not. That's my job. So, your persona is personality, absolutely. Your body language right now, guys, tells me whether you are interested in what I'm saying or not. And every teacher in the school knows when his or her students are tuning them out. And I can tell by eye contact, by your body language, if you really are interested in what I do. The most important thing I do on radio and television is what? Any idea? Sing? Man, I wish I could oh, sing. Talk about, sports. talk about sports. What is talking a form of? What is listening a form of? Communication. The most important thing that you will ever do when you get out of school is communicate with someone, whether it's your boss, your parents, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your peers, you will try to get those people to make them do something that you want them to do. That is what we do. That's what I do on TV and radio. So my job right now, what's your name? 
Robert is to make Robert happy when he leaves here. And he can go home and say, man, I just saw the coolest guy in the world today. I do not want, what's your name? Shannon. I, don't want, I do not want Shannon to say, oh, man, that guy. Man, I'll never watch him on TV. He's the boringest person in the world. Now, it was funny because when Shannon, Shannon shook my hand, she looked me right in the eye. Man, that is the ultimate sign of respect. When you go up to someone and shake their hand, what's your name? Rebecca, Rebecca how are you? Nice to meet you. And what's your favorite class? Social studies, that's a great class. I don't even know what it's all about. Um, <laughs> so you get, you get my point, guys? How important body language is? Man, I used to teach a class at Towson University, and I kid you not. I know you're not allowed to wear baseball hats. Does anybody have a baseball hat in the bag or something? Probably not? Okay, good. Got a baseball hat? Let me borrow that hat for a minute, brother. Cold town, I don't care if it's a redskin hat. Your team's are Redskins? Yeah. Robert Griffin III, right? You like him? How about he give me a high five on that, huh? There we go. See, Victoria and I right now are bonding. Right, Victoria? <laughs> Victoria's like, this guy's not that half bad anymore. So anyway, so you don't mind if I put this on, do you? So anyway, so anyway, I was teaching a class at Towson University a couple years ago, and the class was on TV sports broadcasting. That's what I do. I am a TV sports broadcaster. I tell the people of Baltimore what's happening with the Ravens, with the Orioles, with the Maryland basketball team, with Broadneck High School's sports teams. Kenny Kazmarak, the athletic director at Broadneck. How many of you guys are going to go to Broadneck? Maybe. Maybe, okay. Kenny Kazmarak was the best man in my wedding. He's one of my closest friends. I get down there all the time, okay? So, I'm talking to these college students, and I ask these college students, there's like about 20 kids in the class, I say, how many of you guys want to go on TV when you get out of college and be like me, either a sportscaster or a newscaster? And all the kids put their hands up, yeah! And there's one guy sitting over in a corner like this. I want you to look at me like this. And he's sitting over here like this. And he puts his hand up like that. <laughs> now, you see my energy level, right? Energy level is what? How, what I'm, how, how excited. how excited I am. What's your name? Brianna. Brianna, good job on that. Well done. See, that's, that's, that's a good, that's a good persona. Anyway, I'm excited to be here. I hope you guys are too. Anyway, when I saw him, his name was uh, Eric. When I saw Eric with his hat over his eyes, barely could stay awake, what do you think I did? I kicked him out of class. I said, you are wasting my time, more importantly, you're wasting everybody else's time in here that wants to be here. If you don't want to be here, get out of here, okay? If you don't want to put maximum effort into something, get out of here. How many of you guys know Ray Lewis? I am fortunate in my job to be in the Ravens locker room when Ray Lewis delivers his famous pregame speech. Has any of you guys ever heard it? When Ray Lewis stands in the middle, you guys know Ray Lewis? Greatest middle linebacker in the history of the NFL. He stands in the middle of the locker room, and he looks everybody in the eye in the locker room. He goes around the room. He goes, hey, I'm Ray Lewis, and I got your back today. I'm Ray Lewis, and I got your back today. I got your back today. Who's got my back? I got your back. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> That's good. Now, what does that mean? I got your back. What does that mean? And I'm going to hold this book up because this is what's called the Ravens Ew. Press Guide. Victoria, I, if I, next time I see you, I'll have a Redskin press guy. Thank you. Their motto and their mantra for their, for their football team is this, team. No I, it's team. It's all about the team. So, Ray Lewis, by saying to someone, I got your back, what does that mean? Any idea? You can trust him. No matter what happens in this game today, no matter if you make a mistake or whatever, I'm going to help you out. And I hope you help me out. If I make a mistake, I need you to come up to me and say, hey, man, get it the next play. Second thing he says is, we will not be outworked by the opponent today. We will work harder than them. We will hit harder than them. We will play tougher than them. We will run faster than them. There is nothing they will do that will beat us in terms of effort. That's pretty self-explanatory, right? The third thing he says is, there will be nobody in this locker room who has the fear of failure today. Does any, does, think about the fear of failure. How many of you guys are afraid 
to maybe do something different and maybe if you're interested in music or art or athletics or reading or writing, you're afraid because you're worried about what your friend might be saying or what your girlfriend might be saying, yada, yada, yada. Is that true? Do you think about that fear of failure? You're worried about making a mistake instead of actually having fun and finding something out about it. Does that make sense? Every athlete, how I many of you guys want to be athletes? Show me the hands. Let me tell you what, if you want to be an athlete and you want to play in college and you want to go to school and play sports, you have got to figure out a way to deal with failure. Okay? Now, I don't have to deal too much with failure because I am surrounded at Channel 11 and 98 Rock and WBAL by a fantastic team. We have people that work with me. Our photographer up here is a guy named Eric Lloyd. We used to work together at WMAR-TV in Baltimore, Channel 2. He makes me look good. Seriously, I'm serious. By, by shooting me the way he does on tape, he makes me look good. So when I go on TV, I feel confident that I'm not going to make a mistake and you're going to have to change the channel. Okay, so let's see what I do right now. And I want you to look at what? What I want you to look at? My energy level. Close, close. All right, so I'm going to hit this, hopefully. Now let's, let's get to one of your answers to our water cooler question of the day. This morning we asked, does a win like last night's make you more or less optimistic about this? This is when the Ravens play played Houston, Houston a couple years ago. Amy in Millersville writes, we'll get to the, in a the defense has sputtered out after three quarters the last couple of weeks. They won't be able to repeat that if they hope to beat the Saints this weekend. And what's when airing out the ball, we have the lead in the final minutes. Keep it on the ground. Eat up the clock. Put that game away. Keep sending us those responses. We'll read more in our next hour. Post all of them on the front page of WBALTV.com. Here's Keith Mills with the latest on last night's nail-biting game. Now, 11 Sports with Keith Mills. That's a Mindy New Rock named Sarah over there with that, with that, with that. <laughs> Real apt description. Hey, the Ravens arrived back in Baltimore about an hour ago from Houston. They come home with a 9-4 record thanks to an absolutely unbelievable game last night. 34-28. They win in overtime after watching a 28-7 lead vanish in the second half. Ray Lewis back on the Monday night stage and for one half, he and his teammates dominated. Second quarter, Joe Flacco to Derek Mason. Bobbles keeps his feet inbounds. He missed a wide-open deep pass earlier in the game. We'll see it again after the chest bump with Anquan Bolton. And yes, it is a touchdown. Second of two for Derek Mason. It was 20. And Joseph, yeah, that's how you do it. 21-7 and a half. Rookie David Reed to kick off the third quarter. A tremendous effort runs through three defenders and another. And he is gone. 103 yards. 28-7 Raiders early third. Pretty cool, huh? And did you? <laughs> All right, we're going to stop it right there. Do you get an idea? Do you get an idea of what we do on TV right now? Did you see the energy level? Give me some of your thoughts. You make it energized to keep people tuned in and see what's going to happen. Thank you. That's my job. Yes. Um, you were excited. I was very excited. Why was I excited? Two reasons. Because you want to see what you got. Yeah. I, I wanted to show the people of Baltimore that I like doing what I'm doing. It's that simple. I love it. Yeah. On TV, man, that's a good gig, absolutely. Not bad, huh? I got to get up at 2 o'clock, but I can deal with that, yeah. I just have a question. Are you, like, considered famous? Am I famous? It depends on your definition of famous. I, I'm on TV. I've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this for 30 years. So when I, I'll give you an example. The Orioles played last night, and they won their game. And every, for the last two months, because the Orioles have been really playing well, when I'm there, I walk around the entire stadium at least one time so I can see as many fans as possible. And a lot of those fans come up to me and say hi, talk about the team, and I think that's really cool to kind of bond with the fans. And I was told by someone that I really respect a long time ago, if you didn't want, if you're on TV or if you're in the movies or if you're in a band or if you're singing for a real famous choir or you're doing anything that you want to do and you've achieved in your career where the fans follow you and support you, and if you don't want to interact with them, you're in the wrong business. Because if you're, if, if you're Jay-Z and you're a rapper, right? And you know what, guys? I've had the great fortune 
Last summer, I had the great fortune of interviewing Jay-Z. Really? That was pretty cool. Wait, I had to, uh, well, I'll explain why. Jay-Z is really good friends with LeBron James, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. LeBron James is really good friends with Carmelo Anthony, oh, yeah. who lives in Baltimore. Right. And when Carmelo Anthony was 15 years old, I was covering his high school basketball team, which was Towson Catholic High School in Baltimore County. So last year, Carmelo had a dedication of a community center that he built in West Baltimore. I'm sorry, East Baltimore. The Carmelo Anthony Recreation Center. And LeBron James and Jay-Z and Beyonce were all there. I didn't have a chance to interview Beyonce, but I did get a chance to talk to Jay-Z. So my point is, if you are going to put, if you are going to be a, a public figure, you have got to accept the public into your life. So to answer your question, I don't know if I'm famous or not, but I know a lot of people around town that, that, that enjoy talking to me about sports. I'll put it that way. That makes sense? So any other impressions about what I did on television? And about, uh, if, you're, if you're sitting home, are you going to change the channel when you saw me? I hope not. I hope not. Now, with that said, how did I get here? And that's a big part of this story. How many of you guys, again, I mentioned to you a couple minutes ago, how many of you guys really are interested in something, but again, that fear of failure where you will not pursue it because you're afraid of someone telling you it's wrong, or not wrong, but what are you doing that for? Why are you wasting your time doing that? That's not cool. Well, you know what? It doesn't have to be cool to them. It's got to be cool to you. If you want to play in a band, go for it. If you want to sing in a choir, I'll tell you what, though, it's going to take some practice. If you want to play college sports, if you want to play high school and college sports, let me tell you what you need to do. You need to work hard because someone else out there is doing the same thing. They're hitting the weights. They're running sprints. They're working on their conditioning. They're working on their skill level. How many lacrosse players do we have here? You play, you, how long have you been playing? Fantastic. Good for you. Because everybody in Baltimore County that goes to McDonough and goes to Bryn Mawr and goes to these nationally ranked programs, they're playing when they're six, seven, eight years old, and they're playing every day. I used to coach the baseball team at Cardinal Gibbons High School, which is in West Baltimore. It's closed now, but we used to play Coward Hall and Old Mill and all these teams. And I would tell our guys in the summer, you better go out if you want to play college baseball. We got a guy right now getting ready to play uh, Major League Baseball from our school. And he worked every day on the, on the game. My point is, if you want to do something, don't tell anybody that you can't do it. I need a volunteer. Come on up. No, you don't want to do it? That's okay. There's, there's no right or wrong here. Come on up. And the re only reason I didn't pick, what's your name? Brianna. Brianna is because I'm a guy and he's a guy. And right now, he's Keith Mills when he was a junior in high school. <laughs> And I went to Brooklyn Park High School in North Anne Arundel County, which is now North County High School. Okay, so that's where I'm from. I live up by the airport. Sorry. So anyway, <laughs> Keith Mills here, when he was younger, played three sports in high school. Football, basketball, and baseball. My best sport was baseball. I wanted to be a Major League Baseball player when I grew up. That was my dream. So when I was younger, I played baseball all the time. And my junior year into my senior year, okay, I had just gotten back from Canada playing an international baseball tournament, walked in my high school gym to meet the football coaches. I was the quarterback of our football team my senior year. So it was the day of, first day of practice, and, and I want you to watch. This is great. This is beautiful. <laughs> What's your first name again? Nick. So Nick, that's my son's name. When Nick gets up here, when he first sits down, he's like, yeah, man. I'm helping this guy out. I'm getting some brownie points. This is great. And the longer he sits down and looks at you guys, his body language changes entirely. Like, get to the point, man. Why am I up here? Please help me out. You're embarrassing me. Now, this is great. There, listen, guys, there's no right or wrong in anything I ask you. If that's your opinion, then it's right. My opinion says he's doing a good job. So my, my baseball coach, who was assistant football coach, a guy named Tim McMullen. He was the first athletic director at Broadneck High School. 
and I still talk to him to this day. He is a father figure to me, a mentor, a friend. I love that guy to death. But anyway, we sit down, and we're talking about football season. He goes to me, he goes, I want to talk to you about something really important. He goes, you want to play Major League Baseball, right? I said, yes, sir. He goes, you know, you understand how hard it is. I said, yes, sir. He goes, you know what? You are not good enough. That's exactly what he told me. You are not good enough to play Major League Baseball. What do you think of that? Not good. Not good. That's basically, I said something else under my breath, which he didn't <laughs> need to hear. But he's exactly right. Not good. So let me ask you a question. Since you're not good enough to play Major League Baseball, in my opinion, what are you going to do when you get out of high school? Try something new. What, and what would that be? What, let's, say you, let's just say that, you, that your grades right now are pretty average, which they were, and let's say you want to try to go to college and play college baseball. How are you going to do that with your grades? Ah, great time. I, Round of applause. Go have a seat. Great job. That was hard. Great job. That was hard because he threw himself out here for every one of you guys to judge. And you're all judging him like, oh, man, he's really uptight now. That's great. Look at that. We love to see people squirm, and, unless it's you. Then you don't like to see that. But that was cool. Well done, Nick. Good job. So anyway, the point of that was, guys, I left that meeting thinking, oh, my gosh. You know, why did he have to tell me that? Why do you think he told me that? Make me try harder in baseball? <laughs> Not really, but clo you're, you're real close. So that you didn't go out there and do a disappointment? So I, I didn't set myself up for a big disappointment. What's your name? Maddie. Maddie, absolutely, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha, God, too, we have an expression, too hot in a hot tub, and that's too hot in a hot tub. What's your name? Ava. Ava is exactly <laughs> right. What's your plan B? <laughs> hey, guys, what's your plan B? And plan B is, if plan A doesn't work, if you want to be a, a musician, if you want to be an actress, if you want to sing, if you want to dance, whatever, and for some reason that doesn't work out, what are you going to do? So anyway, my interest was in journalism, okay? I wanted to be a sports writer. So I joined the school newspaper when I was in high school. And you know what? Everyone I knew, all my buddies I hung out with, I tried to hang out with all the cool guys and all that stuff, they laughed me right out of town. They laughed their tail off when they heard I was joining the school newspaper. School newspaper? What are you, crazy? Why are you doing that, man? Oh, for lack of a better word, the nerd word was big when I was in school. What are you, a nerd doing that? I was the only guy in a class with 15, 16 girls. I thought that was pretty good odds, don't you? I liked it. So, not only did I have fun and I learned something about journalism, I really met some, a lot of cool people. People to this day are my friends. My journalism teacher was the best teacher I ever had. She taught me so much about communication and being able to deal with adults and how you write and how you speak and all the things that I use today in my job. Isn't that amazing how that works out? So the best thing about it was the, the next semester, okay, the next semester, all these guys that said I was crazy and said I wasn't cool and yada, yada, this and that, they joined the school newspaper because they saw me having a good time, and I really didn't give a crap what they thought. I could care less. You know, and I know that's hard today, guys. The hardest thing to do in someone your age is not to try to conform to the group. Man, that is really, really hard. My kids, they're 19 and 21 now. They had some problems with it. They all want to fit in, and even if they wanted to explore something that really interests them, they were worried about it because they didn't think the rest of the group thought it was cool. And now they realize that that was really foolish. If you want to do, I'll tell you what, Ray Lewis and I had this conversation. If you want to do something, go for it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. Ray Lewis grew up with no father in Lakeland, Florida. And he used to keep a chart in his garage, okay? His father was a great athlete that held all the records at Lakeland High School. His father was never a part of his life. Whenever Ray Lewis would break a record that his father owned, he would go in his garage and cross it off. And that was motivation for him because people told him he couldn't do it. Ray Lewis has a, has a saying that says, effort is nothing but a deal that you make with you. Effort is between you 
and you, and that's it. There's nobody else involved. There's not your teacher, there's not your father, there's not your mother, not your boyfriend, your girlfriend. It's all you and you. And you see Ray Lewis when he plays, he plays with maximum effort every time. I have never in my whole life ever met anyone. He's 37 years old. He's playing at the highest level of the NFL, 17 years into his career, like he's 20 years old. I've never seen anything like it. I went up to him after the game the other night. I said, Ray, I've seen every one of your games. That was one of the best games I've ever seen. He had this dapper black tie on. Man, he dressed to the T's, man. He looked like something out of GQ. And then I said, you know what? I really like that tie. <laughs> the heck with your tackles tonight. I need to bar that tie for TV. So we, we had a little laugh about it. So, so, so my point is, and I'm going to open it up to some questions and answers right here, is two things. One, you know, you can get into all the, you know, the technical stuff about what I do, how much confidence I have in front of the camera. I'm looking at the camera right here. The camera doesn't intimidate me anymore because I'm used to it. I've been doing it for 30 years. But when I first started, I was scared to death. I mean, I would sit there on set at Channel 2 and I'd shake because I didn't want to make a mistake. I didn't want to have people laugh at me. Now it's all about confidence. The more you do something, the more confident you become. Somebody raised their hand a minute, raised their hand a minute ago when I asked who wanted to be a musician. Who, who, what, what, what instrument you want to play? Yeah, okay, the saxophone. Great. Oh my gosh. I mean, some of the jazz sax players in this, in this country are fantastic. I'm sure, how long have you been playing? Four years. Four years. So we, now four years into your sax career, you're a lot better than you were when you started, right? Who, who wants to sing? I heard some people that, yeah, that's fantastic. What's your name? Hey, let me tell you what, man. I, what, I'm serious. That's what I'm talking about. If, you know what? Hey, he might be having a last laugh, because I'm telling you, if he goes on and becomes a successful singer, good for you. Well done. What's your, what's your name? Marquise. Marquise. If you don't mind sharing, how come? <laughs> just, just, want, just, just like to sing? Or, or, or are you putting me on? No. Oh, okay. That's cool. I listen to you singing songs a lot. Good for you, man. Now, if you might, if, if, if I, if I may, if I, I think that's great. Why are you laughing? Because why? He was like, I listen to singing songs. Well, well that's, that's fine. I, however he wants to do it. This isn't about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about him. It's about him. What he wants to do has nothing to do with you guys. And what Victoria wants to do has nothing to do with anybody other than, hey, man, give her, give her the support. What the heck's wrong with that? I love that, man. I think that's fantastic. I'll tell you what, if I were hiring someone today and we had a job opening at Channel 11, he'd be one of the first guys I'd talk to. And I don't know anything about him. Just for the simple fact that he had the guts to put his hand up and say that, something that might not be, you know, to everyone else's liking. Good job. So anyway, that's my point. So go for it if you think it interests you. The second thing is effort, right? If you're going to do something, do it the best of your ability or don't do it. Don't waste your time, you know? But if you're going to do it, do it to the best you can. That's why I get up at 2 o'clock in the morning. You think I like getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning every day? No. no, thank you. I don't. But it's what I signed on for. And if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it the best I can. It takes a lot of planning. To do what I do, I got two hours of production time in terms of editing, in terms of writing. I had to learn how to write a lot. I had to learn how to edit. I had to learn how to um, um, make, to tell stories. I had to learn how to delegate responsibility to the people I work with, the editors. Eric used to edit a lot of my stuff, and I used to give those guys cut sheets that they couldn't even read. It was like, it was because I was sloppy, but I had to, I had to work on that. So anyway, you get my point, guys. Go for, go for it, what you want to do, and do it the best you can. Okay, now, questions. Any guys got any questions? Fire away. I will answer everything. Yes? If you wake up at 2 in the morning, what time do you go to sleep? I usually get, last night I went to sleep after the Orioles game, which was about quarter to 11. I usually get about, I usually go to bed about 10 o'clock every night. I usually get about four hours of sleep. Oh, my goodness. I make up for it on the weekends. Okay. I get about 7. Yes? Impossible to get 
<laughs> yeah, good friends. What's your name? It is, it is not technically impossible. It is impossible. Even when you're doing nothing, you're doing something. Great point. The only reason I always throw that in there is because everybody always puts their hand up and says, oh, yeah, everybody. I like doing nothing sometimes. Just sitting there vegging out. Yes? Uh, do you ever cover lacrosse? I cover. The question is, do I cover lacrosse? Absolutely. We cover college teams, high school teams. We cover, uh, we cover Broad Next to Runner Park every year. We cover um, uh, Towson University, University of Maryland. We cover uh, McDonough High School. We cover, every, we cover every sport and pretty much every team in the Baltimore area, and that includes Anne Arundel County. We cover Broad Neck High School a lot in soccer, in lacrosse, in basketball, in football when they almost won the state championship a couple of years. Jeff Herrick, their football coach, great friend of mine. I'm sorry? Cheerleading, we, 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 we do a cheerleading, um, we actually aired a cheerleading special on our station a couple years ago. So, you know, I tell you what, guys, it, it's, 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 it's a good gig. You know, we get, I get a chance to go out and cover a lot of sports. Yes? We cover swimming, absolutely. Michael Phelps just won how many gold medals? I'll give you a great story. There is a woman, I was telling Miss Ballard this, there is a woman that is a guidance counselor at Lansdowne High School. Her name is Brittany White. She, in Baltimore County, she swam on the national championship swim team at the North Baltimore Quad Club, Michael Phelps' club, about 15, 18 years ago. And she parlayed that into a full scholarship at the University of Miami, where she got her graduate degree in psychology, and she's about to actually leave teaching and become a psychiatrist in the Baltimore area, and she just got a big job offer in San Diego. And I remember following her career when she was 15 years old, and now she's a guidance counselor. I go in and speak to her classes just like I do this. So, yes, yeah, swimming, we cover swimming a lot. Michael Phelps, you guys have heard of Michael Phelps, greatest swimmer of all time. He was at the Ravens game the other night. His mother is a high school, a middle school principal in Baltimore County, Windsor Mill Middle School. She actually just left to take another job. Yeah. Do you ever cover the Naval Academy? I cover. The question is, do we ever cover the Naval Academy? WBAL broadcast Naval Academy football. Two weeks ago, I went to Dublin, Ireland with the Naval Academy football team. It was one of the great moments of my career. I had the great opportunity to interview the Secretary of the Navy and the Chief of Naval Operations. That might not mean a whole lot to you now. Secretary of the Navy is the highest ranking Naval officer in the country. And it was a big deal, man. To see the Naval Academy football team represent the United States in Ireland was a really big, that was one of the highlights of my career. My dad used to be the head coach of the football team. Richie Mead? Mm -hmm. You're kidding me. You tell your dad that Keith Mills said hi. Your dad has been one of the greatest guys that I have ever met. I mean that sincerely. Took the job down in South Carolina, right? Yeah, and also he was the U.S. Um, men's coach. Right, he coached the U.S. national team. That is, please tell him that I said hi. He was so good to me. Here, the last thing I was going to say, guys, is my job has got very little to do with, with scores and stats and all that other stuff and everything to do with relationships. You build relationships in our business, whether it be Eric and I who worked together 10 years ago at another station and, and met up again today, or Ms. Ballard who taught my daughter in fourth grade at Linthcombe Elementary School. We have developed a relationship where now we work together and I get to come. Your dad has been unbelievably kind to me. Matter of fact, I got to tell you a great story. One of the highlights of my professional career involves her dad. When I was at Channel 2 Television, we used to broadcast a college lacrosse game of the week. And every year, when Army played at Navy, we would broadcast the Army-Navy game at Navy. And there was one of Coach Meade's former players sent him a note from a foxhole in Iraq where it scribbled down on a can of beans a note that said, Coach, Please give the guys our best, beat Army. And when he read this, he got really emotional, and, and, he, and tears started welling. I mean to tell you, it was an unbelievable moment. Here it is, a guy he coached in, I don't know what the guy's name was, in, in lacrosse. It was, Bren, it was Brendan Looney, who unfortunately got killed last year. He got killed in the war. Oh, my gosh. It was, he went to DeMatha High School, and it was 
an unbelievable moment. And your father, oh man, uh, good man. Just a, just a really good guy. He's what this business is all about to me. It is relationships. Uh, you guys have heard of Cal Ripken. Ever heard of Cal Ripken? Cal Ripken and I have a relationship of 30 years. We started the same time. He with the Orioles, I on TV. And um, we still see each other. I coached his son in baseball this year, Ryan. And, uh, but your dad's a good guy, and no question. Any other questions? Got about five more minutes. That's it? Not like how much money I make or how much <laughs> what car I ah. I make anywhere from $10,000 to $200,000, somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Got to figure that out. A week, a year, yeah. What kind of car do you drive? What kind of car I drive? I drive a Jeep Cherokee. You should get a Camaro. Camaro? That's not my style. Yes. Hold up. Listen up. Show some respect, guys. Show some respect. Yeah. Do I have a mansion? Man, I live in Lincecum by the airport, little house. I don't have a mansion. What's your definition? Of, hey, last question or last subject. Uh, she wants to know if you covered dancing. Dancing? I don't cover dancing. My daughter used to dance. And you had the best, by the way, you had the best answer of the day. Plan B is crucial. Now, here's, what, here's the last thing I want to lay on you. How do you guys define success? As you get older and you start doing things you want to do, is it how much money you make? How do you define success? That, you know what? Again, it's not right or wrong. What's your name? Iona. Iona. It's her. It's her. It's whatever she feels. And if that's what she feels the success is, that that's what it's all about. So yeah. What you're happy with. Absolutely. It, it could be what kind of car you drive. It could be how much money you make. It could be what kind of clothes you wear. Mine is yours. If I'm happy and doing what I'm doing and the people I hang out with, then I'm successful. And right now, I'm very successful. To be able to come and do this with you guys and cover sports in Baltimore, be able to talk to Ray Lewis and Adam Jones and all those guys that are playing sports, that's, a big, that, that's cool. Why would I be unhappy? Great answer. Anybody else want to share what their definition of success is? Is it money, car? <laughs> a lot of shoes. How many pairs of shoes? All right. How many pairs of shoes do you have? How many pairs of shoes do you have? Is that right? Oh, I do. Got a lot of shoes. Uh, you were going to say something. You were you were going to say something. Definition of success. Anybody want to share it? Helping people. Absolutely. I know some people that very make very little money but they spend a lot of time making other people's lives better, and they consider themselves, or I consider themselves, very successful. Yeah. Feel accomplished. Feel accomplished. Sense of accomplishment. Now, let me ask you a question. Your, uh, your interest in playing the sax, what, are you going to try to do that professionally when you get older? Uh, probably. Yeah, and you have an idea of how you're going to map out that strategy yet to do that? Yeah. Well, you got some time to do that. That's a great thing about college, guys. I want, to, I want to give you one small piece of advice. If you are hedging whether to go to college or not, go because it gives you two things. You have a good time, and it gives you some time to figure out what you want to do. When you get to a job, most of those people there will teach you what they need you to know, but college gives you time, and it helps you communicate with other people to help do what you want to do. Yes? Right. They don't care what your GPA is. They look for people that are in school. Like if you did newspaper articles or if you're in a tennis club. Absolutely. There is a, that's a great point. There is a de-emphasis in college now, a little de-emphasis of grade point average and a real large emphasis on, on getting involved in the community and getting involved in school. That's a great point. Yeah. One thousand percent, everything you do. If that again, I've heard people say that. That's Ray Lewis's mantra. Ray Lewis's mantra is simple. If the game ends and the Ravens lose, and he looks in the mirror and says, "I gave it everything I owned or everything I had," I, I was successful. Give a great story. They lost last year to New England in the AFC Championship. Devastating loss for the Ravens. I was in the locker room when the rest of the media weren't allowed in. Ray Lewis 
stood off to the side with a guy named Don Dorada, who's a sports producer for Ravens TV. I do a couple shows with him, and Ray Lewis was crying like a baby because he had just lost, and he, he took it hard. He took it real hard. And Don said to me, he goes, Ray, you got to get it together, man. The media's coming in here in about five minutes, and try to get it together. Ray goes, I know, man, I know. I just feel bad for all the guys. I feel bad for Ed Reed. I feel bad for uh, Corey Redding. He was feeling bad for other people. So he goes in, takes a shower, and comes out impeccably dressed and put this unbelievable game face on where he got all the guys in the middle of, of before the media came in, got them all in, and he goes, you know what, guys? We're a family. Next year starts now. When all the media come in here, we're going to be positive about what a great year we had, what a great pleasure it's been playing with each other. And I walked out of there thinking, man, that's, that's what it's all about. Helping each other overcome adversity, man. That's what it's all about. What a great message. Guys, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, one more question? Yeah. Uh, do you know the boy named Rob Chesson? Rob Chesson played at Old Mill. Yeah, he's up at Towson right now. Saw him a couple days ago. Great running back at Old Mill. Tremendous. He won the state championship last year. Rob was a true. They had about 10 guys on that team that are playing college football. And the reason, and Rob had, a, had some trouble academically, to his credit. He went and did some summer school and got academically eligible so he could play. Rob Chesson one day could play in the NFL, even though he's small. He's Ray Rice's size, and you know how good Ray Rice is. Rob Chesson has exactly the same kind of explosiveness. Yes? Do I travel a lot? I used to. Don't travel as much now. I'm starting to travel a little bit with the Orioles because they're an independent race. So um, traveling's fun. Dublin was cool. Yeah. What's that? I got two kids. Uh, one is 21, uh, and Miss Ballard taught her. She's about ready to graduate from Towson. My son is 19, and he is, uh, he's a soccer player. He plays soccer at Towson, and he is uh, a junior. He's a business major. He is an economics major. He wants to make all the money in the family. I'm like, go for it. Thank you, guys. Great job, man. So how did I do? Did I do OK? Even though I'm not a red, even though red, next time I come in, I'll have a red skin press guy for you. How's that? Is that cool? Robert Griffin III. Robert Griffin III will sign it for you. Please. Great job, guys. Thank you. Well done.